You guys really dug my X370 motherboard roundup, which you could find up here. But the most frequent comment I got on that video and also on Twitter was please do this for B350 boards. Well, it's taken a little while to get a bunch of them in the office, but we have products here from the four major players in the AM4 game. And I'm gonna break them down for you right now. Unlike the X370 boards we looked at last time, B350 based products have much less of a price spread to them. In general, the B350 chipset was meant as a more budget friendly alternative to the high end X370 platform. And as such, you won't be seeing any $250 motherboards here. In fact, the cheapest product on this table and the most expensive only differ by about $20. And I think that's actually a great thing. That means that no matter who your manufacturer of choice is, you're likely to have an option in their product stack that will fit both your needs and your budget. This time around, many of these boards have similar features, so I'll try to highlight the differences in each. In the last video, Asus actually had the most expensive board, but here their Prime B350 Plus is actually the cheapest at $99.99. It features a black PCB with red trace accents and LEDs around the PCIe slots. Updating to the latest BIOS enables support for 3200 speed DDR4 kits. And there is support for AMD's Ryzen based APU solutions baked in with HDMI, DVI, and even an old school VGA port around back. It's good to see vendors including next generation storage capabilities even on budget products as the Prime comes with an M.2 slot in addition to its six SATA ports. The audio chipset is a definite downgrade from the X370 boards ASUS offers as the ALC887 won't provide as robust a listening experience as the ALC S1220. There are some smallish heat sinks over the VRMs, but don't expect this board or really any in our roundup today to give you the beefiest overclocks on your Ryzen chips. You can certainly still try as B350 is an overclocking chipset, but in general the X370 boards will provide you with better power delivery and cooling. One thing ASUS does better than almost any other manufacturer in my experience is preventing widespread system chaos in the event of some kind of power surge or sudden overvoltage situation. There are electrostatic discharge guards in place on the LAN port, USB connectors, PS2 port, and even the video outs. There's also voltage protection circuits in place on all the major components, meaning that if a spike happens, you won't lose everything that's plugged in. Moving up, or perhaps slightly laterally, we find the similarly priced $100 to $110 gigabyte AB350 Gaming 3. Also sporting 3200 MHz memory support, the Gaming 3 adds features like an additional RGB lighting header, interchangeable accent overlays, reinforced PCIe slots, and the aforementioned ALC1220 audio chipset. The better chipset also comes with an expanded audio I.O. on the back panel. It also comes in a black and red color scheme and you'll see this become a trend here unfortunately. Storage support here is the same as on the ASUS board with one M.2 slot and six SATA ports. The rear I.O. panel keeps approximately the same number of overall connections available, although Gigabyte offers six USB 3.1 ports and one USB 2, while ASUS gives you two USB 3.1, four USB 3.0, and two USB 2. The fan headers on the board are all of the hybrid fan pin variety, meaning that they have the ability to automatically detect what's plugged into them and adjust voltage and speeds accordingly. This comes in handy when using different solutions for your case cooling, CPU fans, or AIO pumps. Next up is the once again black and red offering from ASRock, the Fatality AB350 Gaming K4. At $110 it competes directly with the Gigabyte board, but does get a little bit fancier in some places. For starters, these two giant rows of arrows point to two M.2 slots instead of just one, which is really great to see on a product this inexpensive. You also get Steel Slot, ASRock's version of PCIe slot reinforcement where your graphics card will be installed, and understandably not on the lower one as these boards aren't meant for multi-GPU setups. Audio is handled by the slightly older but still very good Realtek ALC892 chipset, although you are once again limited regarding audio connectivity on the I.O. panel. 
Maybe ASRock needed the extra space to squeeze in a USB 3.0 Type-C port. Although it's slightly disappointing that the rest of the ports here are all USB 3.0 and 2.0. The lack of any USB 3.1 connectivity is a bit of a surprise. Getting back to the positives, the Fatality sports some decent heat sinks over the VRMs, indicating that you may be able to achieve some nice clock speeds depending on how you fared in the silicon lottery with your Ryzen chip. Moving over a bit to the upper right corner, we can see two RGB headers which integrate with ASRock's LED utility. The utility can also be used to control the RGB lighting around and underneath the chipset heatsink, as well as any connected RGB Wraith coolers. As with the other boards so far, ASRock has baked in support for up to 3200 speed memory kits. The last motherboard we're going to examine today looks completely different. No more black and red. This sweet looking B350 Tomahawk Arctic by MSI will set you back a cool $120. And although it does sport an RGB header, there are actually no LEDs on the board itself except for the audio trace. We also fall back to one M.2 slot and four SATA ports, so a slight downgrade in storage here. The VRM heat sinks are the largest of the group on this board, and also a nice sandblasted aluminum finish to go along with the rest of the board aesthetic. The PCIe slot reinforcement here actually also blends in perfectly with the white and silver theme, but is only present on the top one. You also find slot reinforcement around the dims, which although a nice touch, I find to be rather unnecessary as there's no real torque put on the memory modules under normal circumstances. Memory support in these dim slots is the same as the other boards in this test at 3200 MHz, but the supported memory list is actually enormous for MSI products. Six audio jacks will greet you from the rear I.O. panel, as will a USB 3.1 Type-C port, three USB 3.1 Type-A's, and two USB 2.0. For additional connectivity, you'll also find not only the standard onboard USB 3.1 front panel header, but also a rotated 90 degree version of the same port, allowing for additional case connectivity or just a more convenient location to plug in. I also think it's extraordinarily unfortunate that you won't see the backside of the Tomahawk Arctic when it's installed, as it is a brilliant shade of white and quite striking when you're used to seeing all black PCBs. So if you guys are working up a list on PC Part Picker, which one of these B350 motherboards will you add to your build? Do you think any of these boards is right for your Ryzen 5 chip? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget that when we hit 10,000 subscribers here, I'll be giving away a full system featuring one of these motherboards. So get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. As always guys, thanks for watching.